Hello everyone. Welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. A new variant of COVID-19 has been identified in South Africa first and is named as Omicron. New variants of COVID-19 continue to emerge as this disease continues to spread and the significance of each mutation becomes known only after a period of time. So what's different about this variant? What are the symptoms that one should look out for? and what precautions one should take as far as this variant is concerned. I'm Dr. Lakshmi and let's welcome Senior Consultant Pulmonologist from Yashoda Hospitals, Sikindrawad. Welcome, sir. Yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Gopi Krishna. Uh, I'm working as a Consultant Pulmonologist at uh, Yashoda Hospital, Sikindrawad. So, sir, we know that we are still in the budding stage to know more about this variant of this virus. Right. So, what are the features which we should be worried about? See, basically, uh, the variant, it is called as B11529 and it has been identified uh, somewhere, you know, like uh, 26th November uh, by WHO and it is predominantly seen in South Africa right now. But of late, a uh, few countries have uh, noticed that, you know, this variant is being seen in uh, like in UK as well as in India as well as in, you know, uh, Hong Kong. Some countries have uh, noticed this uh, variant. So this variant is um, like, you know, a uh, little uh, tricky, especially in uh, lieu of diagnostics. So, but the symptoms per se, what they say is uh, pretty much similar to the conventional COVID-19 virus. And uh, this variant, uh, you know, uh, has been uh, uh, addressed by WHO as Omicron. So this, uh, this, this is called as a variant of concern. There is uh, two types of uh, variants which uh, WHO notices. This is called variant of interest and variant of concern. The variant of concern has little features like, you know, uh, this virus can be, you know, sp can spread uh, a little faster. And this, uh, these viruses of variant of concerns can be, you know, uh, like can cause uh, a severity in the disease. And these variant of concern viruses can uh, skip the diagnostic modalities or some therapeutics or sometimes you know, there is something called immune escape the the vaccine barrier which has been uh, created by you know the governments across the world so that's the reason they call it as variant of concern it is being named as uh, omicron so sir talking about the clinical features right. so should we look out for the regular symptoms what uh, we have seen earlier in patients like fever cough and myalgias or are there any other particular symptoms what we should be alarmed about? Few case reports uh, have uh, come into the notice that uh, this uh, specific Omicron variant uh, is not showing uh, conventional features like you know cough cold but uh, predominantly loss of appetite and joint pains and uh, diarrhea. These are the three features which they noticed and uh, it has given you know like uh, uh, rapidly progressed to ARDS in uh, some of the patients. That's the reason it has been uh, named as variant of concern because of its rapidity. So, but lots of studies have yet to come. We literally don't know about this variant. Not that particularly we say that this can spread rapidly. Don't uh, we, we need not fear about because very little information is there uh, with World Health Organization also yet. So, talking about uh, the tests and the diagnostic uh, modalities. So the existing uh, test, what is available, do you think that is uh, enough or uh, you think we should be developing a newer modalities to diagnose this variant in particular? The WHO says that, you know, with this Omicron or this variant of concern, um, this uh, test can be detected through our conventional PCR. Uh, there is a particular point which I would like to stress that, you know, this is slightly different from other viruses. In particular, that uh, there are three genes which we assess in uh, COVID-19 PCR predominantly, the S gene, the N gene and the RDRP gene. So this virus particularly skips S gene. So they identified that the conventional PCR, when they are trying to assay the genes, if it is skipping S, it can be detected like it can be an Omicron. But what they do is once this uh, virus skips the S gene, they send it for phenotypical you know, and genotypical assessment to the uh, virology labs. This is what uh, we, the information we have right now, but uh, conventional PCR would be sufficient to identify this virus. 
So sir, talking about severity, is there any particular uh, age group which has to be more protected, especially children, now that the schools have reopened and uh, it's just now that uh, we see that the scenario is getting back to the normality. So do you think uh, the children should be more protected as far as this variant is concerned? See, uh, regarding this variant and children, we don't have much information. Uh, this variant has been identified uh, predominantly in young patients, especially in South Africa, that, you know, a cluster of cases were seen in a college. So, and they found that uh, these uh, patients were, uh, most of them were younger age group and they had very mild disease. Other than that, uh, they saw that, you know, few cases who were immunocompromised, like, you know, aged patients and people who had some comorbid issues, they had a severe ARDS. So we can particularly, you know, see that uh, this, if the immunity is proper or built up in the body, probably this might not cause a bit of concern for us. So in regards to this, probably uh, I, I cannot comment exactly like, you know, whether children would be more affected or not. If it has a rapid trans transmissibility, probably everyone can get affected. The other point which uh, particularly I would like to stress about this virus is, uh, it has noticed that uh, the previous COVID infection offers some protection to most of the people or patients who got the disease. This can skip that. So there is a chance of reinfection. So if we had a COVID-19 infection, usually the second infections are very, very, very bad. But in lieu of this variant of concern, Omicron, there is a chance of reinfection. That's what the you know information we have right now from the uh, data. So, sir, you just mentioned that uh, having prior infection and uh, even vaccination is not much of help as far as this variant is concerned. So, then what are the precautions that uh, the general public should take as far as this is concerned? In regards to this uh, variant of concern, Omicron, um, the WHO advocates that, you know, the conventional or proven uh, the public and uh, uh, healthcare and social safety measures are effective enough. So like, you know, the well-fitting masks and, and hygiene will definitely help us along with the physical distancing. And still, I, can, I cannot exactly say that, you know, vaccines are uh, not effective and all, but uh, yeah, definitely vaccination can uh, prove benefit to the people. If we have a chance of getting, it vac getting vaccinated against COVID-19, I would like to suggest that you should go for a vaccination. Second, uh, other than the physical and social distancing aspects, uh, the other point is uh, people should, uh, you know, avoid crowded places and, you know, and there should be a good, good indoor uh, ventilation too, which can uh, help this uh, virus, you know, to spread less because of its uh, rapid transmissibility. So I will not say that, you know, vaccination doesn't uh, provide cover, but yeah, still results have to come into the picture. So, sir, we've just discussed that this variant is more uh, infectious and in terms of uh, disease also is showing uh, the severity is more. So, what exactly do we mean by more infectious, more severity and more transmissibility? The transmissibility basically means like it can spread really fast and uh, even though like uh, conventionally what uh, the scientists have proven that uh, just without a mask and a small interaction of, you know, uh, five, 10 minutes interaction will not spread COVID-19 unless there is an interaction of 35 to 40 minutes without a mask in a closed room can spread COVID-19. But these variants of concern, especially the Delta, we had a very bad second wave, you know, the, the Delta as well as this Omicron, they say that this uh, viruses can spread really fast, even, like, even though you have a shorter interaction with the patient who has COVID-19, you know, affected with this virus. The second thing, this is called transmissibility. The second thing that regarding the severity, uh, still uh, data yet has to come into the picture, but uh, whatever the cases which have been recorded across the world are uh, showing that, you know, the younger people are uh, having milder disease, but the people who are immunocompromised are having a severe disease, means the disease spreads really fast and uh, doesn't give time. The conventional COVID-19 virus, we saw that. In the first wave, there was a time between, you know, 7 to 10 days uh, time was given, like incubation, we say, to start into a, a disease manifestation. In the second wave, with, with the Delta virus, we saw that, you know, the time duration was a little lesser and it is less than a week. Probably this, the variant of concern or Omicron can be a little faster or probably in a less than a five days or a seven days uh, time itself, we can uh, produce an ARDS or a severe lung infection. 
this is what the severity means so keeping this in mind regarding transmissibility and the severity of the disease do you think uh, the parents or the government should uh, reconsider their decision to open schools and colleges in lieu of the current situation like you know we we literally don't have cases very very rare so very rarely we see the cases are uh, you know being diagnosed and they are having severity there is no uh, particular uh, social spread or a community spread of the virus right now so there should be an indicator you know just because we see uh, spots of cases or few cases are you know uh, are coming up in the schools or colleges doesn't mean that we should we have to shut down probably yes the government has to reconsider and they have their own guidelines as well as uh, health indicators where they monitor and they take the decisions about to open a, a school or a college so i particularly suggest that whenever there is no way or community transmissibility of the virus is not there it is ideal you know the government or the government or the economy or even the school should get opened up so sir regarding mutations it was initially alpha then beta and then delta and gamma and now omicron so what would you like to say about this the covid-19 virus is just like any other virus like we have seen earlier the conventional flu as well as the swine flu we had around 10 years back every virus mutates so the virus are known to get mutated mutation means changing its uh, you know the appearance the changing its uh, uh, structure the change in uh, the causing the uh, efficacy of the disease and the change in uh, you know the pattern of uh, uh, that how the disease uh, spreads so this is what we call it as a mutation conventionally so in this particular covid-19 virus uh, there are couple of mutations which we have already seen they are called as you know variant of concern and they are like alpha one is which we saw somewhere in uk and somewhere in uh, december uh, 2020 and then second mutation was uh, beta which was seen in uh, south africa the third mutation was gamma you know uh, which was seen uh, in brazil the fourth one we all know you know it's very pretty much famous across the world the delta mutation started in india and went across the world and the four the fifth mutation is the omicron which is of uh, concern right now these are the basic uh, mutations which we see in covid-19 so of the uh, f- uh, four uh, proven uh, mutations where we saw that the delta was a little problematic and it caused lots of uh, you know uh, disease as well as uh, deaths as well as a load on the healthcare uh, system uh, we have to wait and see how this omicron behaves can be a, you know a diffuse uh, bomb some sort of thing like you know it can just uh, give away or it can uh, cause a, a wave again in uh, most of the countries we exactly don't know how this is going to behave with all the current scenario of vaccination and you know improved immunities uh, secondary to already contracted infections and all i'm expecting that uh, this this should be a uh, you know a softer kind of infection so sir before concluding this episode what message you would like to give to the public out there as far as this variant of uh, covid is concerned not particularly about this variant or any uh, you know variant particularly covid is a transmissible disease you know it spreads by droplets so how to stop it it's not the you know getting advanced in the therapy or getting advanced in diagnostics we should get advanced in the you know the attitude how we take our care of ourselves particularly you know the 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 physical as well as the social uh, distancing part would be helping us a lot point one and second thing would be you know well fitting masks properly uh, placing the mask over the face especially the covering the nose as the mouth as well as the mouth would uh, you know definitely help us third would be a proper hand hygiene whenever you touch you know something different or a new uh, object or when you meet people better you know you keep yourself uh, hand wash either with the soap and water as well as or with the uh, alcohol uh, based sanitizers fourth one definitely you know uh, this is a uh, generalized uh, um, point like avoid crowded places probably you know uh, less of uh, uh functions or parties or less of pilgrimages would definitely help the uh, people to avoid this spread or another outbreak of virus fourth uh, you know keeping our indoor uh, spaces a little uh, giving a uh, ventilation will definitely help in reducing this uh, virus last but not least get everyone vaccinated i'm just waiting when the you know when the kids would be get vaccinated probably you know uh, the protection unless everyone is protected no one is uh, safe 
So vaccination to kids as well as the elders as well as the adults, all three categories should be completed. Then only we are uh, safe from this uh, COVID-19. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Hope all your queries and questions as far as COVID-19 or Micron variant is concerned are answered. Thank you all for watching and do join us until next week as well. Thank you and stay safe.